The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to AmeriCamp's 2024 College Trends webinar. My name is Sophie Joe, and I lead Global Marketing and Communications for AmeriCamp. Today, we will be exploring the different color trends as well as the associated social, cultural, and market trends predicted by industry experts for 2024. For those who are not familiar with AmeriCamp, we are a thought leader and innovator in color and additive master batch, performance compounds, functional additives, and engineer compounds. AmeriCamp's business was built on colors. It's very important for us to stay ahead of the curve and get a deep understanding of what the end customers want and need. We believe that sharing this type of information will help improve our collaboration with our existing customers and also our potential customers. We hope that this presentation will give you inspiration on how you feel and view the colors and also help you apply the inspiration to either your business or your personal life. There will be a Q&A section at the end, so please save your questions to then. For the theme this year, we wanted to build four unique virtual immersive worlds. Within each world, you will see different digital environments that simulate various places, scenarios, or realities. Each world has its own theme that will eventually come together to form a comprehensive universe. And there are six colors that make up each world. As mentioned before, each of these colors is also tied to a social, cultural or market trend that will be explored further. Without further ado, I will turn it over to my colleague, Tyler Malesh, to present you with the fascinating worlds of colors. Tyler, please go ahead. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Sophie. All right, everyone. So let's take our journey into our first world. So this is the ethereal world. Um, the ethereal world bursts with light and beauty. Serenity is the key to wellness and soothing. It's a place where all beings are welcome. And the world is basically our limit. It's our wildest dreams. And we want to make that a reality, much like a giraffe and an elephant just hanging out in the sky. Um, the focus for this world will be health and overall mental and physical well-being. Um, and some common themes we'll see throughout this are um, well-being, innovator, digital detoxes, wellness initiatives, increased productivity, and hybrid work. So getting into our first color, the um, name for this one is Bejeweled. So Bejeweled makes us feel light and airy, much like a cloud in the sky. Um, by 2024, we're going to see a lot of trends for KPIs focused on um, health and well-being overall. Um, and this is partially brought on by something called the Great Resignation. So this, this term was coined by Anthony Klotz um, around like 2021 during the height of the pandemic. Um, and we've seen an increase of people quitting their jobs, mostly because of the realization that they weren't happy and they weren't feeling fulfilled of their work-life balance. So with that, a lot of companies are now adopting that as a KPI. Um, one large company we see in doing this is Google. So they have actually started um, providing free mental health programs as a part of their benefits packages for their employees. And they're using KPI or yeah, mental health as a KPI um, starting in 2024 to measure, to see what they have to change to keep their employees um, happy and just overall morale up. The next color we have is visionary. This exudes a feeling of excitement, much like the butterflies that you get in your stomach when something you know exciting is about to happen. Um, and this is basically focused around becoming an innovator for future generations by creating that work-life balance that sets them up for success. So when a person is happy and healthy at work, they have more energy, they have more morale and excitement to get things done. And a lot of people are saying that that work-life balance is the most important part of, be, part of being an employee. Um, 
I could use myself, for example. So I just turned 27 last week. Um, a lot of my friends are quitting their current jobs to go to a new job where that health and well-being is the focus, not so much the salary, but how they feel, what are they gaining from not only the perks that they're receiving, but how do they feel around their colleagues and how do they, you know, how do we all interact? That's something that's becoming more and more important to the younger generation. So we have to keep that flowing. The next one is um, sugar fluff. So how I describe this is basically just being a kid again. It's imagining that your wildest dreams can come true, kind of like the giraffe we have over here in the a burst of a cloud. Um, and this is focused on the digital detox. So less is more when it comes to digital. Keeping things simple and clear can lead to better results. Um, take away that complexity and that clutter and schedule some time away from your digital devices. We're all you know, so connected throughout the day that it's good for you know, 10, 15 minutes per day, put every, all the devices down and just have that that mental break that we all need on a daily basis. Next, we have restore. This is kind of the, the warmth that you get from the sun. So on your first day of vacation where you step onto the beach and you just look up and say, OK, I have 10 days here. Let's let the stress melt away. Let's just enjoy my time. Um, this is focused mostly around taking wellness, initi wellness initiatives that your company is offering. Um, like I said, a lot of companies post pandemic are offering new um, scenarios that their employees want to take advantage of. So doing some yoga during lunch or having that minute of breath work at your desk when you just feel overwhelmed, take those few minutes, restore your body, come back with a stronger, positive, more clear mind. Next we have lavender haze. Um, this is that motivation that comes with a new day. So every day you wake up, you look outside, there is a little bit of haze out there and you're like, okay, we can do this. Let's conquer what we have to do. Um, so cutting through the haze can also help increase your productivity and performance. Productivity improvement tools are also a great way to help do this. They're designed to simplify your tasks, your streamline your workflow and benefit you know, from accessing documents quickly, creating charts and graphs, visualize your progress or your planning to help just streamline everything, take that step back and take 20 pieces of information that you have, condense it down into one, and then you can focus on everything a little bit further. And finally, in the slush or the ethereal world, we have serene royalty. Um, so this is that, that power of strength and confidence that you feel when you, you know, you're happy, you feel like you're owning your own life, you're making the decisions. Um, this kind of structures are again around you know, overall health and well-being, but more around like the hybrid work structure where, you know, if you have something to do, you have the freedom to do that and you don't feel like you have to be apologizing to people for, for just doing things that come up in your life. Um, a great scenario that we've seen from this comes from the JM Smucker Co. So a lot of us probably know the name. Um, they're the responsible for all the jams and jellies that we love coming from Smuckers, also Jif, Milkbone for our, our favorite fur babies and also Folgers. Um, so they're headquartered in Orville, Ohio, and during the height of the pandemic and post pandemic, they've adopted what they call as core weeks. So basically these are 22 weeks per year where the employees are, um, expected to be on the headquarters campus, but outside of those weeks, you can be living anywhere in the United States. It doesn't matter where you don't have to have a reason for it. It's just what you want to do. Um, and this has been proven to promote productivity and also increase worker satisfaction. Um, and, and with the interview that I read with one of the, the executives, he said that his employees, they have more freedom. They are also enjoying the travel coming back to the office when they have to be in those um, core weeks. And they've also just seen an overall increase in morale and productivity from the employees. So with that, that is the end of the ethereal world. Um, given the market trends, we've noticed an increase in some of our markets. So, so we have fibers, carpet and textiles, um, and Americam also offers a great you know, grid of solutions for these this industry. So we have our solution dyeing process. We have Enshield, which is our antimicrobial master batch. We also offer Endoramax, so UV stabilizers to help stabilize those brighter colors um, so they keep their richness and their vibrance 
um, as they're weathering throughout the years. And we also offer our new Embrace line, which is our softening line. So if you want to feel just as comfortable and confident as um, this woman in the photograph, Embrace is a great master batch to add into your textiles to achieve that. And then traveling into the next world, we have the celestial world. Um, it sets forth the idea that trust and loyalty are the key to world peace. Technology is light years ahead of us in all other worlds. And just like space, there's that sense of calmness and tranquility that we see as we travel throughout this vast void. Um, as we can see, the, tech, the focus here will be technology and its advancements that we have noticed throughout the years. And some market trends are digital transformations, artificial intelligence or AI, digital identities, unlocking solutions, also virtual reality, which is VR, and augmented reality, which is AR, and then cybersecurity. So getting into the first color here, we have infinite. It's that feeling when you look up in the night sky and think, wow, that is a vast world out there. Imagine all the possibilities that could take place if we could harness what is out there. Um, by doing that, we can have digital transformation. So invest in tools and tech that digitally transform how you do everyday business. You know, it can get pretty monotonous, pretty competitive, but staying you know, up to date on technology helps your analyses. You can tackle issues like our big supply chain issues that we continue to face. Um, you can have a better predictive analysis for demand planning. And one big thing at Americam is our newly adopted Digital Advisory Council, where we take um, basically suggestions from our employees and think of how we can turn a lot of our older practices into more up-to-date digital practices to streamline our workflow and just stay competitive as a company. And next we have Wish Upon. So this is the thrill of seeing that shooting star at night and the excitement of making a wish. You know, as a child, this is kind of what we all do on a daily basis. We just look up, see a shooting star, make a wish for what, how we want to turn out into the future. Um, we use AI kind of like that now. So AI is kind of like our shooting star where we are harnessing its capabilities for handling those larger, more complex tasks. And every day the algorithms are just getting better and better. So as I like to say, your wish is AI's command. So take advantage of those, those technologies and help, you know, take again, those larger tasks, break them down a little bit more, get that creativity flowing and just see how you can, you know, take that technology to the next level. And next we have stargaze. So again, kind of the calmness of being a kid, looking at the stars, trying to figure out all the constellations, even though the only one you can find is probably the Big Dipper because you know no other ones, or if you're an adult like me, you don't know any of them. <laughs> um, but just much like stars have their identity, so do humans. So in the digital world, we call it our digital identity and the digital identity harnesses technologies that can help secure our precious data, our passwords, our confidential information. Anything we do on a daily basis on the internet is our identity. So every time we you know, shop on a different website or we have our search history or cookies, we're all building our own identity. So we need to make sure that is secure. So facial recognition, fingerprint recognition, um, even retinal, retina scans are being starting to be used a lot more, especially for that complex data in larger companies. Um, but if we can centralize that, use those third-party verification apps and help prevent identity theft and fraud, that can take us a long way in the future. Next, we have alchemy. So much like our ancient philosophers unlock solutions to their problem, so can we. So unlocking solutions with increasing network speeds upload and download faster than our ancient philosophers have ever done before. Global internet speeds have increased rapidly throughout the years, especially within the past decade. Um, in a study done in 2021 by a company called Ookla, which is a global leader in network intelligence and connectivity, they estimated that since 2017, the average global speed of internet has risen by almost 32% and mobile networks have risen by 60%. So that was since 2017. So we're six years down the road and we're at 60%. So just think of where we can go in the future with technology, getting us closer and closer and figuring out how we can solve issues even faster. Next, we have Lost Galaxy. So just 
imagine a whole galaxy that we don't know exists. It's that feeling of the unknown. Will we ever get to meet anybody that lives there? Are there people that live there? Will we ever make life happen on that galaxy? That is what we use VR and AR for. So um, VR and AR can be used for creation, testing, um, and sales purposes to help get your products not be lost on the shelves. A great way that companies are leveraging this is with Facebook's Oculus and then Snapchat and Instagram also have AR filters. And then Amazon is also becoming a front runner with their Amazon view. So it's basically a scan of your room. You can see how furniture looks in your room. If you want to try on a new piece of clothing from Amazon um, marketplace, you can try that on with a kind of a, an AR representation of your body. So it's, you're making more informed choices as a consumer. You're not spending as much money or as much time shopping around and you can make sure you're getting what you want up front. And then finally, within the celestial world, we have what it's called midnights. So every midnight is the start of a new beginning. It's a new adventure, but it's also the best time that hackers like to attack. So having those cybersecurity measures in place to help keep keep your customers' data safe and secure while it's not being monitored is especially important. A study done by Gartner predicts that by 2024, at least 50% of all organizations will use AI-driven security. So again, bringing back that AI portion into another element of cybersecurity to help detect their cyber attacks more quickly than traditional methods. So that standard monitoring that your IT does on a daily basis, that's becoming more important and actually more secure than having somebody monitor that because they can flip through loads more data in a shorter amount of time to make sure that there's nothing that raises a red flag. So with Midnight's being the last of the celestial worlds um, in the market trends, we've noticed mostly an increase within the medical and the fibers markets. Um, mostly our engineer compounds division is handling the healthcare markets, which is a great place to you know, use these darker colors for your brand and your sustainability measures. Um, and also darker colors for weatherability. So Americam has been a, a leader in being in a darker color space, but also achieving that better weatherability. So as we know, darker colors attract more of the sunlight. They'll degrade faster under certain conditions, um, especially outside. But Americam does a great job of combating that in the darker color spaces. And then traveling into world three of four. So this is called the verdant world. Verdant world exudes growth and optimism for what is known and what is also to come. The world's philosophy is rooted in being one with yourself and your surroundings, and you'll continuously be learning to grow in order to renew. Um, I guess we can probably tell that this world is focused on sustainability. Um, very hot topic in the past few years, and it's only becoming bigger. Some of the trends we'll see are circular thinking, fair trade, access to nature, salvage materials, a refreshed take, and a regenerative future. So getting into our first color, we have what is called mountain fog. Um, it's that feeling of you know, going on a, your favorite hiking path, seeing that fog, and then by the end it's cleared up, you can see all the mountains and all of its beauty. Um, this kind of comes back to the circular thinking where the fog rolls in, fog rolls out, but circular thinking, again, for the sustainability aspect, um, it's basically just taking what we know as a consumer and being conscious of our decisions. So according to a study done by MasterCard in 2021, 58% of consumers are becoming more aware of their ecological footprint and 85% are willing to take a personal action to help change that behavior and help better the climate. Um, having that circular thinking mindset can help change the way that we view products, we use products, how we, you know, just overall our conscious buying decisions as consumers. Next we have matcha. So this is basically the, the satisfaction of going to that, that small coffee shop that you love and seeing your favorite barista. And when you take that first sip of your almond milk latcha, matcha latte, it's that, again, that, that satisfaction that that choice that you chose to go to that, sh that small shop or buy the, the fair trade product, it's only bettering us for the future. 
So fair trade addresses many of the issues that arise as a result of unfair market competition. Most importantly, it enables small producers and growers based in developing countries to compete on the larger playing fields. And it also helps with you know, us paying more sustainable prices, us you know, keeping our market value within how we're purchasing, and also committing to those fair trade ingredients that are fair trade certified. Those are the products that you want to mostly purchase because you know that they're coming from a, a good place and you are staying true to helping be more sustainable as an overall world. So we have moss. So get lost in nature, find new paths, find, you know, anything that's off the beaten path that you haven't seen before. Exposing yourself and having that access to nature can help you feel better emotionally and also then physically. Um, it reduces your blood pressure, your heart rates can improve, muscle tension can ease, and also it increases the production of certain hormones that can help with happiness. And it also helps us to promote that refresh take and help get another perspective of the environment and think, how can I help improve this beautiful landscape that I, I want to keep enjoying for years to come, or I want my children to experience this. It's, you know, get just getting out there, seeing what is more to come and how we can preserve that. And next we have rainforest. Um, so as you can kind of tell by the picture, it's that feeling of humidity and heat that you feel. And it's all the beautiful animals that we see that are so tropical and that we love. We want to preserve that. So one way we can do that is by using salvage materials. So salvage materials play a vital role in steps to helping us preserve our precious ecosystem. Um, ecosystem restoration can help improve our overall health, our well-being, quality of life, not only for us, but for our beloved animals. Um, it also helps to increase the availability of green spaces, mitigating pollution, and also help the risk of um, disease spreading from animals to humans. Um, so just keep in mind that what we are doing now will also have the effect on future generations and not only us as humans, but also our animals as well. And next we have morning dew. Um, it's that crisp, clean, fresh feeling that you get every morning when you feel refreshed or much like this lit woman is in the photo. She just probably conquered a, a big hike for herself and she's just looking out to this vast landscape and thinking, you know, Again, there's so much more out there, why don't we preserve it? So have that refresh take on bio-based and biodegradable products, allow yourself to see beyond the stigma of those products and reap the benefits of then creating a circular economy. Bio-based materials are a great way to better um, recycling efforts and fossil-based fossil -based options. They have a higher process efficiency thanks to the use of new processes, um, so enzymes, fermentation, biocatalysts, and they can also help reduce our carbon footprint as well. And then finally, within the verdant world, we have what is called renew. So it's that excitement of knowing that small choice you made today, made today will help impact future generations to come. A lot of companies are having incentives for their products. So for example, make a purchase and we'll plant a tree. Um, other examples include regenerative sustainability. So architects and builders are starting to build homes with more net positive environments on the outcome. A lot of larger buildings are becoming certified in the sustainability world. So they're not using as much energy. Their materials are coming from sustainable sources, maybe a salvaged material that we've seen before. Um, they're just not taking in as much and they're giving more back than they are taking in. So that's the net positive. That's what we wanna to go towards in the future because you know, as we hit 8 billion people, we need to think of better ways of how we can approach to make all of these people happy and just care for them in the future. So with that being the last color in the verdant world, um, again, focused mostly around sustainability. American offers a great portfolio for sustainable products. One is our end balance um, additive line. So this is additive uh, master batches that address the issues on compostability, renewability, reusability, and degradability. We also offer a great unique process called cold pounding. Um, this helps to reduce energy and water consumption in the compounding process, and it can also just help your materials in general with 
seeing one less heat history to preserve more of a, a more vibrant color in overall material properties. So if that's something you're interested in, you know, we have a contact information at the end of the presentation, please let us know. And then as we begin our final descent back into reality, as we enter our last world, um, this is the ardent world. So the ardent world radiates extreme passion behind all emotion and thoughts, whether it's hate, love, fear, courage, it's backed by that enthusiasm. This world can be inviting or intimidating based on how you perceive it. And this is mostly red based colors. Um, that's why it's, you know, the love, hate that you see. Um, again, mostly passion, emotion and survival is the focus of this world. And some of the trends we see are alter finding alternative solutions, awareness, fight, focus, voice of the customer or VOC, and just taking time. So the first color in this world is named thrill. So this is taking that leap to do something that thrills you or something you always wanted to do. It's, you know, that rush of adrenaline that you get. So it's finding those alternative options. Life has a tendency to be repetitive and tedious. Find those options that you think can change it up a little bit. Keep life exciting, experience, you know, fun, laughter, and anything that does thrill you. Next, we have fortitude. This is the confidence, the strength, the courage that is in, more important now than it has ever been before. We're in such a diverse and inclusive environment, and we want to establish that belonging for our employees or our friends and our family and make them feel connected and productive. Organizations are starting to adopt um, DEI practices, much like Americam has. So, with Americam's new DEI Council, we are looking to See how can we make everybody feel confident, encourage them to step out of their comfort zone, make them feel heard. Um, we you know, invite you to do the same thing. Your employees will feel that sense of gratitude, happiness, and belonging. And that is something that we all should feel as our, we go about our daily lives. And next we have Ignite. Um, this is basically that spark that's been lit within you when you want to fight for something that you believe in. So find your passion and ignite that response. A great way to do this is finding charities that you believe in and help them achieve their goals. Many companies have established funds to support great causes such as human rights, racial, in racial injustice, um, the 2S LGBTQ plus is a, becoming a big thing with a lot of companies, poverty er eradication and also climate justice is also a great way to get involved. And next we have velocity. Um, life moves fast. Find that rush of adrenaline, see what gets you excited and want to conquer and just have that ability to take on the day. Um, focus on what you believe in, but also, you know, try to accomplish what you want to along the way. So chip away at those smaller tasks and then, um, sorry, chip away at the larger tasks and then your productivity will start to improve. You won't feel as overwhelmed. Um, those can be little things like taking a walk, cooking a new recipe, or meditating for a few minutes. Another great way to, you know, help focus your mind and take some of that overwhelmness out. And next we have rage. So this is that ever burning fire within you to speak up and hear and have your voice heard. A lot of companies are now listening more to the voice of the customer and taking advantage of their outspoken thoughts. Um, you know, as consumers, we're not as afraid to, afraid to speak up of if we like something, we don't like something, what can a, a company change? So just overall establish that relationship with your customers, identify opportunities for growth and improve your revenue, optimize your products with better visibility on what customers want, um, increase the performance across all departments by streamlining and saying, we need to move away from this because it's not selling. Let's move more towards this. Just get everybody on the same page. Have that voice of the customer always in the back of your mind to think, how can we do things better? And then finally, so this is our last color in the ardent world. And this is called passion. It's the gratitude, the satisfaction, the overall dedication that, that you feel when you truly feel strongly about something. Um, put yourself in your customer's shoes when you're developing new products. Consumers will appreciate a more thought out product and brand over those that feel disjointed. Um, so create products that 
you would not only want to love and use, but make sure that everybody would. So again, have that voice of the customer in mind and create those products that feel cohesive. And with that, again, being the last color, um, you know, given the market trends, we've noticed an increase in our building construction and also again, fibers market. Um, Americam offers high chroma polypropylene um, exterior applications. So this can be for cladding, window and door frames. We also, again, offer that highly tested weatherable materials that withstand more time in the elements. So if you do have any questions, um, you know, let us know. So now that we've really ended back to reality, we would like to open it up to you know, our Q&A session for anybody that might have questions. Thanks to Tyler for taking us through this wonderful journey. Uh, and thanks to our audience for the time spent with us today. If you would like to further discuss uh, the color trends or get a copy of this report or learn more about AmeriCam solutions, please reach out to your respective AmeriCam account managers or use the contact information here. And as Tyler said, we'll open it up to Q&A now. And for today's Q&A section, we have invited a, couple, a few of our colleagues to be a panelist. Uh, they are Linda Boyett our design and te technical support manager, Pavan Maheshwaram, who is our market development manager of our fibers units, and then Bhuvanesh Yarigiri, who is a research scientist at AmeriCam. So if you would like to ask questions, please, uh, if you're not familiar with the GoToMeeting setup, I think uh, you can type a message in the chat box, and then we'll, able, we'll be able to see the questions and then help answers them. Mm Okay, so I saw the first question came in. Uh, the question is, color stability and aesthetics are very important to us. So how can you help our products hold up against the harsh disinfectants used in the healthcare environment? I think mostly medical device, right? Yeah, um, yeah I could take this one. Um, so that's a great question, by the way. So we have our team of experts. Um, they're very well versed, um, not just in sales, but also in you know the engineering side of things. So they can help guide within that material selection. So this includes finding the right formula to tackle those tough environments. Um, we offer a great line of healthcare products that have been tested against topical and disinfectants and also sterilization processes like the autoclave and that um, ethylene oxide. Um, so this helps to fight the infection, prevent, infection prevention while also maintaining those colors. Um, so for your brand strategies, your brand um, overall, just visual appeal, we definitely can do that. So if you have you know, anything in mind or want to hit a specific color, we can definitely get that formulated for you. Okay. Thank you, Tyler. So the next question, um, great presentation. Thank you. What are you what are your thoughts on light colors that might fade over time? Maybe have a bit more color concentration from the beginning? Any of our panelists would like to take yeah, it? Yeah, I, I, can, I can take this. Um, sometimes increasing concentration can help with color fade. Um, probably more importantly, though, it's important to, uh, first of all, select the proper colorant at the start. Uh, we have a, a full accelerated weathering lab available here at our corporate offices. And uh, we've got uh, lots of history with testing a wide variety of colorants for uh, specific applications. 
Thank you, Linda. The next question, um, in the automotive industry, do you see one manufacturer leaning toward one color trend while other manufacturers leaning toward other color trends? I can take this one again. Um, I would say that in the automotive industry, the base colors seem to be fairly stable, you know, with your typical gray, beige, um, black kind of interiors. But what we are seeing is differentiation among the different OEMs uh, with brighter accent colors. Um, so we have done some chromatic oranges uh, as well as some metallic and uh, pearlescent effect types for mainly accent pieces recently. Thank you, Linda. And then we got another, I don't think it's a question, I think it's more of a comment uh, from someone. It says antimicrobial was very effective during COVID, especially with PPE, um, or maybe our panelists can comment on that, whether it's a true statement or whether you agree to it. Uh, what was the question again? Uh... Yeah, so some somebody commented that antimicrobial was very effective during COVID, especially with PPE. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's the case? Do you agree? Yeah, in terms of um, uh, during COVID, you know, I think um, antimicrobials, especially in the filtration applications, you know, have seen some light, uh, and uh, especially uh, American. As a whole, you know, we offer a lot of additives that go into face mask applications. Uh, that being said, there is increasing need of antimicrobials uh, after COVID, especially in several applications from hygiene to medical. Uh, I would say that would, would be a true statement uh, in the coming years, coming years as well. Okay. And you think it's especially effective with PPE in it? Yes. Yes. Certain applications, you know, very niche applications. Thank you, Pavan. Um, so I don't see any more questions coming in. We still have a little bit more time. If you would like to ask questions, please go ahead. Okay, so another question we've got just now. Can you elaborate on the recent trends in color additives for plastics and how they're impacting the master batch industry? Any volunteer for this question? Uh, I can uh, I can take this. And so, in terms of um, uh, recent trends in color additives, uh, I can uh, infer some on the general trends and implications in terms of sustainability or eco-friendly solutions. Uh, as you, as everyone knows, you know there's a growing demand for sustainable solutions in plastics. So uh, includes you know naturally sourced and stuff or biodegradable pigments or polymers uh, to reduce the footprint of the plastic products. So the implication around that would be is, you know, like um, MRKM as a whole or, uh, you know, master batch companies uh, like us have been adapting and have been adapting by developing or incorporating, incorporating sustainable colorant options into their formulations and uh, seeking ways to reduce the uh, impact of plastics on the environment. Thank you, Pavan. Uh, the next question, how is the cost for these hues, I guess, these new, new comparing colors? I guess it's a question for Linda. <gasps> yeah, uh, so cost is always a sensitive uh, question because you, you, what's important is that you select the correct pigments for, to meet the uh, requirements of the application. Um, I would say that, you know, cost has gone up and down with certain colors and availability. Uh, I, I don't think um, cost has changed much, uh, but again, what's important is making sure that you select the right, you know, the right pigment for the application. Um, there's a whole wide of pigments that are available in the same color with a wide range of cost structure. Uh, obviously, designs can be made to minimize the cost, um, but the, the, the costs have, have remained uh, the same for many of the applications. Um, 
based off of the pigment selection. Thank you, Linda. Uh, one more question. What are some of the industries that you have predicted the color trends for? So I know Tyler mentioned textile, fibers, building and construction, and automotive, right? Are yeah. Any other industries these new colors might be applicable for? I mean, I would say probably all industries. It's mostly where you see fit. Um, you know, there can be the overlap just because we mentioned that something is is well suited for medical or fibers doesn't mean that you can't use it in a consumer facing product. Um, you know, we have the ability to formulate these colors and just create the best formula and the material for your application. Um, that's kind of what our business's model is was built around. So if you do have some specific application that you know doesn't really fit with what we mentioned, you can still bring it to us and we can try to figure out a great solution for you. That's great. Thank you, Tyler. All right. Uh, if you like, again, if you'd like to ask more questions, please type the message in the chat box. It's in your control panel. There's a chat button you can click and then put in your message. All right. Um, so if there are no more questions, I guess we can close the webinar today. Thanks to Tyler for the great presentation and thanks to our panelists for helping answer the questions and more importantly, thanks to our audience for spending time with us today. We lo look forward to hearing from you. So please feel free to reach out and contact and thank you. Have a good day. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Thanks.